been a busy day here on the bayou. We're getting ready to butcher these girls tomorrow, so they didn't get any, any food this afternoon. But mainly, we finished up the uh, new chicken tractor, the layer tractor. We've got the uh, door locks on there, and this is some, you know, redneck door locks, but they work. They work just fine, and they didn't cost anything. So we've got the um, roost finished, and I don't know how I feel about this. It's, uh, we'll see, we'll see. I, I made this bottom part to help the girls jump up. I don't know if it's far enough out. I, I may have to redo it. Put some screws in down here on the end. Do you know why I did that? Comment below if you know why I did it. Yeah, comment below if you know why I did it. And I put in the waterer. So you remember I did have both of these corners looking like that so I've redone it so now this corner just has enough to hold the waterer and I have it built so that I can fill it from outside and you don't have to come inside to fill the water got two spigots that ought to be enough for four to six girls and over here I'm gonna put a feeder and here's the feeder and just put it together um, it's just gonna be a one holder but the whole idea here is that they mostly eat the bugs and the grass as I move them daily or every two days and that the feed is just kind of a stability thing so that they always have food if um, if the grass isn't necessarily the kind of grass I don't know the kind of grass they like so it's ready to be occupied and it will be occupied tomorrow I will be putting the three laying girls that I have in here I'm still up in the air on whether or not to put the smallest meat chicken here also. I'm just up in the air. Also, I put in a secondary locking system for the, um, for the uh, uh, um, nests. I have the barrel locks, and that's probably fine enough unless a raccoon gets in there doing his little thing. So this is just a couple pieces of junk that uh, I threw together real quick. And what I'll do is I'll drill a hole uh, and I'll stick a nail in there. And then I'll drill a corresponding hole up here so that normally it would be down. The nail would hold it down. And if you wanted to put it up, you could put it up and put the nail in here so that it doesn't flop. But um, that's what that is. That's, some, that's just some redneck ingenuity right there. So it's ready to go. And like I said, first thing in the morning, going to get ready for butchering. Maybe butchering the, the rooster, too, just because he ain't coming in here. Um, he is too much of a rapist. I mean, I know that's what roosters do, but he's just, he's overbearing. Those three girls, they have it tough. So I may be sending him to meet his maker um, tomorrow. We're still talking about it because I don't know what else to do with him. I think it'd be cruel just to leave him alone and... Um, we don't want him just out and about, and he's not coming in here. So I will see you in the morning, and we'll know more. Well, it's fairly early Sunday morning, and we are getting ready to butcher. Got the killing cone out, and just pulling out all the things that we need to butcher. I wonder if Mr. Peepers knows something. Okay, so I'm all set up. I got my knives, and yeah, that may seem like a lot of knives for four chickens, but it's my normal knives that I get out for butchering when I do 25 chickens. And I hate a dull knife. And even though I have a sharpener here, I really just like to switch to a, a, a another knife when one starts dulling on me. So here's my, my cutting area. And over here, this is my vinegar water. Um, I probably put a little more vinegar in there than I should. But that's my vinegar water. Once you've gotten through eviscerating the chicken, the chicken goes in here for a quick 45 seconds to a minute dip. Then this is going to be what's called the pink water to just get, get it kind of swashed around and get it cleaned out. And then it goes over into the uh, ice and water to sit and go through rigor mortis. Once again, here's the killing station. I got my heat gloves. I got my killing cone. I got my blood bucket 
got some water in there for starter and over here is my hot water which is a little too hot it needs to be at 150 so i'm gonna have to put a little cold water in there um, and what this is is once you kill the chicken you dunk it in here to to loosen the feathers there's a there's a, a fat globule around each feather that you want to not melt but loosen uh soften so that that when you get it into the uh, chicken plucker it can do its job as efficiently as possible um i'm very proud of this chicken plucker but i'm also always very concerned about how whether it's going to work well um i've tested it yesterday and everything seemed okay um it is some real redneck uh, uh engineering so you never know then i have this extra table that's cleaned off and then this little dumaflage is supposed to be where the chickens kind of uh, not dry out, but kind of drip out a little bit um, before you put them into the uh, wrapper. And that won't happen until later this afternoon, but I've just got it all out. Now, you might notice it looks kind of dark, and it's not that it's early anymore. Um, it's just a dreary day, and there's thunder boomers, and there's a, a, a threat of rain. But you know what? We don't stop for rain around here. If it rains, we just keep going, and if it rains real hard, then we might take a break, but um, we're just going to keep on going. I also have my butchering book just in case I get to a place, you know, kind of have a brain fart and, and think, oh man, and I, I can look at that. And then I have this piece of paper I printed out, I think the last time I butchered, and I've just kept it around, and it's a, just a good cheat sheet. And um, it says, you know, prep for with fly traps, cut proof gloves sharpener knives killing station killing cone blood bucket knife brown ladder got that uh the donkey station hot water 150 degrees a little soap see i need to put some soap in there chicken plucker water from the garden got that feather catcher got that butcher station knives offal can awful how you said that offal i gotta get that water hose bleach container metal tray for organs i think my wife's bringing that um bags for necks organ meat she's bringing that then we got the vinegar bath and pink bath shrink wrapping, which will happen this afternoon. So that's a good little cheat sheet to have. And I recommend that if you're doing something like this where you're, oh yeah, she did bring my bags out. I just need a, a bucket for the guts and I need to get some soap in that um, hot water. And I'm ready to start killing chickens. What do you say? All right, I got the first girl. She's a big girl, too, in the killing cone. And um, from this point on, I probably won't be filming much because I'm out here by myself today. I'm just doing four chickens. But it's just not um, logistically possible since I just, you know, film off my phone. I don't really want to stick it up on a tripod and just film everything and then edit later. There are a lot of videos out there on how to do this step by step, and I recommend them. They are partially how I learned. Um, I do want to say one thing. Scoot, birdie. As I start, I try not to take butchering uh, lightly or flippantly. Um, one of the reasons I do this is so that I can be closer to my food source. And I don't just mean from the standpoint of knowing, you know, what this chicken ate, but how it was raised and that it was processed, that it was butchered, that it was killed humanely as humanely as you can uh, do that and one thing I do is I like to start out this process with a prayer just thanking God that he's allowed me the ability to do this to be able to, to raise my own chickens for food to, to you know to, to take the eggs and and then take the the meat chickens themselves and um, I just ask him to help me to do a good job, to do a swift job, and um, to just always be appreciative of, of what I've got here, because I think this is this is a, a blessing type thing. I mean, there is a spiritual element to doing this, to raising your own animals and then processing them, and then and then eating your own animals, and butchering is is just a part of it. And I understand it's not for everybody, not at all. But if you've done this, and if you, you, you know, and it's the same with hunting. 
You know, a lot of people will tell you that when they go hunting, you know, deer hunters talk about this all the time. There's a spiritual process to taking your own game and, and um, your own food. And, and, and I agree. Um, it's the same kind of thing. So I'm about to start. I'm letting her kind of calm down. As the blood goes to her head, she kind of passes out a little bit, kind of kind of goes into a kind of a, a, a comosotic state, which is probably not a word. And then so when I go in there with my sharpest knife and I cut her um, jugular on either side of her chin, her uh, jawbone, it's a quick uh, death. And then I let her bleed on out and then I begin the process. So going to start now. Got everything set up. Um, probably won't pick this back up until I'm about done. Just, just logistically. I'm not trying to, to hide the, the, the reality of the process. I just logistically, I've got things to do and I'll pick you back up on the other side. I had to stop the butchering process, wash my hands and get my phone. This is just amazing. I've never butchered a layer before. I mean, we've always butchered at six to eight weeks and they weren't, you know, laying age yet. And first of all, like a grease or, or well, I'll tell you what it's like. It's like melted butter has just been pouring out of her. And then these came out. These are eggs. And this is just so amazing to me. And I'll tell you what. I talked about the spiritual aspect of butchering and hunting and raising your own food. How? Do you look at this and see all that goes into a, a, a lowly chicken and not be amazed and not know in your heart that there is a creator behind this? This just floors me. Just floors me. All right. All right, we're all done. Got four chickens uh, processed. Well, I say we're all done. I'll come back later and actually... Uh, put them in their shrink wraps and this is all the yolks or eggs I guess that I pulled out of four chickens and this I just never thought about it I mean this is what an idiot I am I just in my mind I never thought about it and I guess I just thought they made one chicken at a, or one egg at a time or, or I don't know there's tons of eggs in there and this one is so interesting because you can feel the shell forming it's got a different feel than these these guys are basically like yolks and you can see blood veins in there god is amazing god is amazing and when you bust one it's like melted butter just going everywhere it's just a mess so don't know what to do with them got a big old mess of chicken roe and i don't know what to do with it because I, I think it's too rich to be feeding the dog I don't want to make her sick. So I guess I'm going to do the same thing I do with the rest of it. And that's throw it out in the swamp. I don't throw in the bayou. Number one, because it's prone to sticking around. And that's not pretty. But I also don't want to attract alligators right up to our doorstep. Um, when I throw it in the swamp, I think raccoons, possums, and stuff like that kind of get it. But Anyway... It was a uh, pretty successful. The uh, plucker did okay. These chickens, uh, they're big chickens, and they pretty much filled the plucker, and they're tough chickens. And uh, I don't think I'll, uh, I don't think I'll let meat chickens progress into layers again. It was an experiment. I wanted to see what they do. I had just lost two layers and um, I thought I'd see if they could lay. And they can lay. And um, But like I said, they don't roost. They're just too fat to be climbing up there and roosting and I can't have that. I can't have them tearing up the ground. Anyway, appreciate you being here. Um, the rest of the day is going to be spent on cleaning up and then I'm going to move the layers into their new home and I guess we're gonna let mr. peepers the asshole rooster live a little bit longer I'm not gonna process him when I do kill him so it doesn't really matter that I do it today so I guess what we'll do is just um, let him live a 
bachelor's life in here for another week or so. I got I got people coming for the for the week and I don't want to mess with it. And I'll put out feelers and see if somebody wants him. I'd rather him go somewhere that he's wanted. But he's not wanted here. 